Okay, hello. I'm very excited to be here today to tell you more about Angular 2 and React Native. So my name is Marc Laval. I'm a software engineer at Amadeus. And I've been working with the Angular team for more than a year now on Angular 2 itself and more recently on this uh, exciting project. So it may sound a bit crazy, but what I'm going to show you today is how you can build mobile applications using Angular 2 and React Native. So by mobile application, I mean truly native applications. Uh, so there is no Cordova involved, no web views, no DOM, really native. Okay, and so this is great. So it works today for iOS and Android, and hopefully late uh, in the future for more uh, platforms. So what is, great, what is great is that it really allows to do cross-platform development with a unified developer experience among all those different channels. So the, don't dream too much. So the, the philosophy behind it is not to write the code once and run it everywhere so that with some magic happening somewhere. No, the philosophy here is more to learn once, so Angular 2, and to use it everywhere to build many applications. Okay, so before going to the technical details, uh, the best thing to the best thing is to have a look at what can be done with this. So let's go for a demo. So what I'm going to show you is a kitchen sink application, a showcase application. Uh, so on the left, uh, you've got uh, iOS, on the right, uh, Android. And so basically, as you can see, we can display text and images, native text and native images, which makes a big difference, right? Okay, uh, so basically when building such applications, you're going to use components. And uh, so most of them, many of them are similar to the both platforms. So we saw text and image. But this is also the case for the scroll views that we we'll get um, on both platforms. This nest is text. Um, all those inputs also, so the text input, slider, the switch, so the pickers. So, the, so even if they look a bit different in that case, because each platform has its own implementation, they are really the same component. Then you've got some which are more specific to, to each platform. So, uh, for example, here on iOS, you've got these activity indicators, the progress view, the segmented controls, the date picker. At the bottom, you've got the tab bar. Um, so on iOS, you've got this drawer on the left, on the side, uh, the toolbar at the top, uh, this particular pager uh, layout, and those progress bars, for example. Uh, on iOS, you also got uh, map view, for example, uh, and so basically this is where I come from, the very southeast of France, uh, very sunny by the sea and the, between the sea and the mountains, very nice. Okay, so on top of components uh, to build your applications, we need some APIs, what I call APIs. So basically things that you call from the, from the code, uh, like an alert, for example. And again, some of them are the same on both platforms. Even if they look differently, so API is the same. Uh, some will be more specific, like this action sheet uh, on iOS. Okay, so through those APIs, you can also access some uh, information about the platform uh, or access geolocation, which doesn't really work with the emulators. Uh, but also on Android, for example, you've got those uh, date pickers. Uh, or a time picker, the native one, which are in this case uh, APIs. So we saw on iOS it was a component, here it's more uh, an API. So basically if you use only those common uh, APIs and components, uh, you can really build screens or even small applications which are uh, the very same on uh, uh, iOS and Android. So for example, here is a full to-do MVC. So I'm not, a good, I'm not a good designer, sorry. But uh, this is a fully working to-do MVC, and this is the very same code, the very same template uh, for both iOS and Android in that case. Uh, and even there is a feature to save and load the list of to-dos from the local storage. And again, this is the same API for both platforms, so you can do the very same thing. Okay, so on top of all that, uh, to build your application, you will also need to recognize the user actions, the so gestures, basically. So here's a small playground which will show that you can recognize swipe, uh, tap, some panning. Uh, it even works with multi-touch uh, events uh, like pinch or rotate. Uh, so behind the scenes, so we are, we're using the well-known HammerJS uh, library. So to, and we fill it with basically events coming from React Native, which are very low-level events like touch start, touch move, or touch cancel. And so you've got all the gesture available, and you can even create your own gesture if you want to. 
Okay, so the next thing is a small demo of um, HTTP, uh, for example. Okay, so uh, nothing really crazy, you can just type something, get a query Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia to get a list of pages. But so what you don't see here is that um, it uses the HTTP module from Angular 2 with nothing, re nothing specific at all. So you can really use that in, a, in your code directly. And what you don't see also here is that all the navigation which is happening on both applications is using the router or router, or uh, it just con completely confused me. So in French, we say router, just simply. Uh, okay, so, but, so basically the two uses the, the router here. Um, and so even on, on Android, you can plug the back button to the router and just navigate back inside the application and even catch the last back button just to get confirmation from the user if they want to exit the application. So basically catching the back button is more like an API from, from, from Android. Okay, so the last part of the demo uh, will be this uh, an more experimental animation uh, usage. So first thing I wanted to try is to see if we're listening to the events from AmaJS and we try to update the view immediately. So we can do something like this. Uh, and it's quite smooth. Uh, it works on both. Uh, yeah, or it should work on both. Yeah, no, it works. Okay, and then uh, React Native provides also a polyfill of request animation frame so that we can use directly here. So I can take these balls and send them around like that. So let's try that a bit. Let's, let's try that a bit. So if I tap one of them, everything is moving randomly. And it's pretty smooth on both platforms, especially on a real device. But those balls are quite simple. They're just simple views. So let's make things a bit more complex. And so let's load the to-do MVC that we saw just earlier in each single ball. So there are 20 of them. And we can still animate everything like this. So here it's, you can start, you can see, and you can feel that you're starting to reach some kind of limits. Um, but there's a big work on going inside React Native itself to improve animation performances by moving most of the animation into the really native, native side of the, with some yeah, native code. So it's quite good today, and uh, it's going to be even better. And so in both cases, uh, we're still inside a React Native application. So you've got access to all the development tools from React Native, so you can debug your application in Chrome, you can reload or having even live reload, you have the uh, performance monitor. So auto reloading is not supported yet today. Uh, and about the inspector, so I've got, I've got good hope to be able to integrate Augury inside this, um, inside this so that you will be able to inspect your native application uh, with Augury also. So very exciting. Okay, so that was a demo. So now you may wonder, do you, uh, what kind of code do you're going to write to, to do this, uh, this application? And so this is a s sample of, the, of that. Uh, it's quite, so as you can see, it's just some regular to code. You've got your component with a selector, your template, your class. Um, so nothing fancy here. So one thing, though, is that you don't, for sure you don't use HTML, but here you've got the set, this library of components that we saw and that you're going to use here. So just proper on, uh, normal Angular 2 components with input, output, uh, some actions that you can execute on them. So with React Native, also there is no CSS, really, there is, but it comes with a styling system. So it looks a bit like CSS because it's a JSON object, but that's the only similarity. Well, not the only one, because the properties are also um, kind of the same. Uh, so, yeah, it's a new styling system, basically, but it, uh, it supports absolute positioning, and it supports flexbox. So for you as web developers, it's super easy to, to create your layout and, yeah, for your application. Then for the gestures, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, you just use tap or swipe here uh, in the template, and it's going to work out of the box. And then you can use everything from Angular 2, all the directives, uh, you can project nodes, you can write components, subcomponents, uh, really everything. Uh, all the features, uh, including HTTP uh, and the router. On top of that, you also get access to everything, all the React Native APIs. 
So the style sheet here is, which is more utility. But for example, if you wanted to create an alert, as we saw during the demo, you would just import alert from React Native and then in your code do alert.show with some parameters and it will work. Uh, so, so basically, you can build applications with all your Angular 2 skills, uh, learning a, a set of components, a set of APIs from React Native, and that's, and that's it. And so this is great because uh, it really enables you to share code, basically. So a bit, even the ugly spaghetti code that you will write somehow, but so you can share it obviously between iOS and Android, and so even sometimes the template itself, the view, can be shared. Um, but on top of that, you can share a lot of code also between your native application and your web application. So all the services all the, uh, can be completely shared. Even your service that connects to a backend using Angular, the HTTP module from Angular 2, you can fully share it. So you write it once, you test once, and you share it across web, iOS, Android. Okay, so now um, let's have a look at how it works uh, really. So to understand that, first let's have a look at how React Native works in general. So it comes with two parts: uh, so the native one and the just, uh, yeah, native part and the JavaScript part. So on the native side, you've got two threads basically: so the manuized thread that you'll get in any application, and a shadow thread, which is used for measuring and layout. So those two threads uh, can access the platform APIs and manipulate the UI components. And so then, on the JavaScript side, so and the two, so the two sides communicate through those, this bridge in the middle. So on the JavaScript side, you've got a thread, a unique thread in which you can execute any JavaScript. And so inside, the, inside this thread, you've got a set of APIs, which are called the bridge JavaScript APIs, which are exposed. And basically, from JavaScript, you can, at the end, access the platform APIs at the, at the end and the UI components. And so basically, it means that you can create a React Native application in just vanilla JavaScript. So this would be a hello world uh, in just vanilla JavaScript. So, okay, it's not very developer friendly. Uh, you need to be able to access this UI manager uh, and to create views and, man and attach them manually, but it works. So now, on Angular 2 side, uh, there is the architecture where, the, uh, as Matthias was, was mentioning this morning, where the rendering is completely decoupled from the rest of the application. Um, and so, all, so the application, so by application I mean the, this is where all the components, the directives, the dependency injection, the change detection lives. But when it comes to rendering, this is delegated to a renderer, which itself is a bit dumb. It just receives instruction to create elements or to update them or move them around, uh, and that's it. So by default in Angular 2, you've got a DOM renderer, which is able to communicate with the DOM so that you create your web pages. So if we mix the two architecture, we get this, which is basically a React Native application, standard one. And inside the JS thread, uh, we're going to execute the Angular 2 application with just a special renderer, which, is going, which knows how to use those APIs, low-level APIs, to build the elements and to move them and update them. In some cases, the application, like in the case of the alert I was mentioning, uh, the application may access the bridge API directly, and that's it. That's how it works. So, uh, about the project, uh, um, we just released uh, an alpha version last month, so you can use it today. Uh, and basically, we're continuing on you to get some feedback, uh, raise some bugs, suggest some improvements. Uh, after that, the project is basically sitting between Angular and React Native. So the situation is a bit something like this. Uh, maybe not that extreme, for sure. Um, but the good thing is that those two projects are moving fast forward, uh, delivering new features almost every week. And so integrating everything together is a, yeah, is a must and is great. Uh, the next big thing will be offline compilation, so uh, like uh, which was presented yesterday, and so it will really boost, uh, improve the performances of the overall application. Then there are a number of topics which are of interest for, for this project. So the first one is testability, so it's already quite advanced. So today it's possible to write pure unit tests using, for example, just menu tests that you could run in Node.js or with Karma in your favorite browser, which means that all the React Native part is being mocked. 
Uh, also, there is a working prototype of end-to-end -end test using Protractor and Appium. So Appium, if you don't know it, it's basically web drivers for native application. So with, in this prototype, uh, you can you see that uh, you just write a usual Protractor test, uh, but which is driving an, uh, the native application. Okay, so the next thing would be uh, performance and animations. So we saw that we can already do um, basic animations, and that the performance are quite good already today, and it will be improved. So the first, uh, but animations, so first there is uh, so this big work on going inside uh, React Native, so that too, because with the request animation frame, everything is driven by the JavaScript, basically. Uh, and so by moving animations really to the native side of React Native, uh, things would be much better. And for sure, uh, this new implementation inside React Native would have to be uh, kind of integrated with, with what Matthias presented this morning, so that you can really do the same animations for your React Native application. The next topic will be extensibility. So we saw that um, React Native exposes a number of components and APIs um, to the users, but it doesn't expose everything that exists in native worlds. But the good thing is that React Native can be extended. And so there is already a vibrant community of developers who are creating extensions and publishing them as packages on NPM. And so basically all this has to work uh, within Angular 2. And the, last and the last very exciting topic will be universal uh, Windows platform. So last month, during the F8 conference, Microsoft and uh, Facebook announced that they will bring the support of this platform to React Native, so which means that it will be possible to create applications for Windows Phone, Windows Desktop, Xbox, or HoloLens. And so if it works with React Native, it's going to work also with uh, Angular 2. Okay, so a few links to finish uh, this presentation. Uh, so basically you can use all that today, it's ready. Uh, so there is a main repository uh, that you can clone and from which you can build those kitchen sink applications that you saw and look at the code of the, all the samples that we saw. Uh, there is some documentation that comes uh, with it. Um, and there is also a seed project which is basically uh, that you can just clone and use to start your own application. So basically it includes some scripts to do the build, to run application, to run unit tests, to run end-to-end -end tests, uh, everything that you need basically. Okay, uh, so thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ping me on, on Twitter. I'll publish also the slides there, or you can grab me in the hall. So, thank you.